All right. <laughs> Let me guess what you're thinking. You're going into this field because you think you're doing the right thing. You're trying to save the world by tackling on climate change and getting rid of pollution. You think that recycling is saving the world and that you're doing your part, that money and costs are like irrelevant to the future and that it's being used efficiently, that everyone who is like investing into these companies are using it wisely to save the world. Boy, do I have some really bad news for you. Not all of that is true. What you see and what you hear is not what's being implemented around the world, at least from what I can see. And I've been in this field for like at least two years, so maybe I'm still new to this, but because I work in the government sector, I know that the whole government system, at least in America and California, is not like being pushed to the point where people are actually implementing this and like trying to do better. And it's not gonna happen for a very long time. So straight up, here are the environmental and sustainable lies that I learned and figured out on the job as an environmental engineer. The first thing is that we don't recycle correctly. And you're probably thinking all it has to do is have that little triangle sign on a material and you think that it's recyclable, right? But that's not the case. Every single triangle sign has a different number on it. There can be numbers from 1 through 7, and each different number corresponds to what the material is made out of. So okay, we can categorize into 7 different materials of recyclables. But the bad thing is that not every recycling plant recycles all 7 of them. For the most part, we just recycle number 1 and maybe number 5. You can do more research on that, but overall, we're not recycling responsibly or correctly. And of all things, you're probably even going to see something like a trash can and a recycling bin right next to each other. Yeah, maybe they're separated, but at the end of the day, they're just gonna put it all into one little trash bin and then just throw it in a landfill. While we're like campaigning to separate so all your efforts and all my efforts at my job, trying to advocate for this, it's just going in the trash, literally. The next thing is that money isn't used like efficiently. And ultimately, it feels like it's going to waste. So I work for the government and you think that in California they're pushing really hard to like advocate for these renewable and sustainable systems? Yeah, they're not doing that. At the end of the year, whatever leftover money we don't use, we have to spend it all because, you know, it's already been implemented for the contract. Because we're pretty efficient at what we do, we always have leftover money. So every single November, just last month, we have like over maybe thirty or sixty thousand dollars to spend. You're probably thinking, wow, you have sixty thousand dollars to spend on greener technology or this and that. No, actually we don't. What we had actually was $60,000 worth of a specific fund used for a specific purpose. So that means you couldn't spend it on like better technology. You could only spend it on what is meant and designed to be spent on. In this case, it was like office supplies. And so basically we spent like $60,000 worth of printer ink or like office paper. You know how many trees have to die for that? Under no circumstance is that sustainable at all. We had to spend money to officially end a contract and we spent it all on sustainable paper. So that leads me on to my next topic. We're not as environmentally friendly as you think we are. So say for example you're into like permitting and fees. So if you're auditing some facility and you find out that they are like dumping out hazardous waste into some stream, that's bad for them, right? So for you, you have to write them up and then they get charged a fee. Imagine like a $100,000 fee. Let's say for example that facility, they're making millions though. So if all you do is charge them a $100,000 fee, but they're like making millions, they'll just be like, yeah, whatever, I can just pay the fee. So basically they just get like a slap on the wrist saying, don't do that or, you know, pay up. And then once they pay up, that's their like legal repercussion, but they can just do that again next year. Who cares about the river, right? They just pay the fine and then continue on for the next year and then pay the fine again. And lastly, although this might not really be like an environmental or sustainable related kind of thing, the job title is pretty misleading. So I applied this position as an environmental engineer. Alright, so engineer at the bottom. You'd think that, at least to Google, I'd be researching and developing some sort of sustainable technology that will help uh, the future. And so I applied to this environmental engineer position thinking I'd be doing what Google says. You know, I love technology, I love research and science, but at the end of the day, I'm just emailing people saying, stop throwing your trash on the ground. Or something like, yeah, you can paint that wall white, just don't spill it or pour it down the drain. Just like dumb stuff like that. Like to me, that's just small little things that are sort of common sense that anyone should know. I'm not doing any like groundbreaking technology. I'm not like saving the turtles. I'm not stopping global warming as much as I think I would. I'm just doing the same old mundane thing that goes on every single day. Sometimes I just do weird jobs too, like dumpster dive to find like some hazardous material that someone might have thrown away. Like maybe someone threw a bucket of paint in a trash can. And so it's my job to retrieve that paint. So what I do, I just... Swan dive! 
into the, the trash can. Or maybe someone left some like lead paint underneath some building. And so what's my job? I just crawl underneath the crawl space of a building and then retrieve that paint bucket or some test sample or something like that. Just really weird jobs, sometimes even dangerous. Yeah, so this job is not as glamorous as you think. You get down, you get dirty, you get frustrated because people aren't following the rules or people are just like that dumb. Like seriously, what, what are they even thinking? It's just so frustrating. Like sometimes I don't even know why I'm like still here because it's just... <sighs> so when you get into this field, <laughs> just want to let you know that I warned you. You're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna realize so many things that you were taught were probably wrong. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, that's all I have for today. Goodbye.